Greetings, everyone. It is time once again for the Daily Baptist Bread Devotional. And today is Friday, uh, August 9th, 2019. And this is Brother Scott bringing you these devotionals each and every day. So let me flip this around and we will get started. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Sorry about that. All right. Let me get a drink of water here before we get started. All right. Well, today is Friday, and it is August 9th, 2019. And the topic for today is Go To Guy. Go To Guy. I wasn't sure how to do the parentheses because I didn't have any of those type of parentheses on my phone, so I did the best I could when I was typing in the title. So just hope that uh, you'll probably be like, "What? What's going on here?" All right. Well, <clears throat> so the uh, go-to guy is the title of today's topic, and the author today is DP, and that is short for uh, DP. <laughs> Uh, let's go down here and see where he is. All right. Uh, that's David per Perdue, and he is the pastor of First Baptist Church in Milford, uh, Delaware, I believe that is. D-E. I believe that's short for Delaware. <clears throat> All right. And the uh, verse today is some from Psalms 37, verse 39. And it says here, But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Psalm 37, 39. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So, he says here, uh, as we begin the topic, he says, As technology has changed, I've tried to keep up. <laughs> yeah, I agree there. I've tried to keep up, he says. And I try to keep up, too. I'm sure we all try to keep up with technology as it changes. So again, he says, as technology has changed, I've tried to keep up. I realize, however, that this is not one of my strong points. Yeah. In fact, when I run into trouble, I often go to one of the men in our church for help. I can call him, text him, or email him with any problems I encounter. I call him my go-to guy to techn uh, for technology matters. Thankfully, he normally comes through for me and bails me out. Yeah, <laughs> amen. <clears throat> I am impressed with the second part of today's verse. He is their strength in time of trouble. I am reminded of several thoughts relating to the one, the one, that's Jesus, to whom we are to go to uh, go when we have trouble, and that's Jesus. Go to Jesus because he's the mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. So he says here, I am reminded of several thoughts relating to the one to whom we go. We are to go uh, to. We are to go when we have trouble. First, we need to realize that we will have times of trouble. Yeah, we need to realize that. That's a guarantee. He says, whenever we find ourselves. Uh, <clears throat> Wherever we find ourselves, sorry, wherever we find ourselves, troubles will come. Most reading this today could listen, uh, list family problems. So most reading, or if you're listening to this, because you're probably not reading it, you're just listening. So most reading or listening to this today could list family problems, financial problems, emotional burdens, sickness, or many other troubles. Don't expect to be trouble-free. Right, just because you're a born-again believer and become a, a saved born-again believer doesn't mean that you're going to be trouble-free because troubles will still come, but Jesus will help you through them, amen, because he says his burden is light. So don't expect to be trouble-free. The psalmist said that he, was, that he was our strength in troublesome times. So the psalmist said that he was our strength in troublesome times. That's talking about the Lord. It's not... A matter of if we have troubles it's a matter of when they will come and yes they will come <clears throat> they might not be big troubles but we all have troubles in our life might be small troubles might be uh, 
me uh, being uh, attacked by the opposition even. So that's a trouble right there, but we are to get through those troubles with the help of the Lord. <clears throat> All right. So next, we have uh, we need to remember God's many promises that our troubles are not more than we can handle. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, They are common to man. So let's go there, 10.13. 1 Corinthians 10.13. <clears throat> All right, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13 says this. All right, so it says here, uh, There hath no temptation taken you, but uh, such as is common to man. But God is faithful, uh, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but, with that, uh, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So yes, we'll have temptations. It's uh, the verse is actually talking about temptations, <clears throat> not really troubles, but temptations that we have. Um, but yeah, I guess you could apply that to uh, to troubles. That troubles are common to man, but uh, the verse is actually talking about temptations that we have, not not troubles. Uh, temptations and troubles are are uh, I believe different different uh, topics. But uh, I guess he was trying to apply this to. Troubles are uh, common to man <clears throat> because we can't escape our troubles. And but uh, this verse is talking about temptation and how there's a way uh, of escape uh, with that temptation. And uh, you may be able to bear it. So, but I can see where he's going with uh, about the trouble part. All right. So Psalm thirty four nineteen tells us many are the afflictions of the righteous. So many are the afflictions of the righteous. So Psalm thirty four nineteen. Let's go there. Psalm thirty four nineteen, and read the entire verse. <clears throat> Psalm thirty four and verse nineteen. All right. So thirty four nineteen says thus. All right. So nineteen it says, "Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all." Amen. All right, so again, uh, let me repeat this for you. It says, next, we need to remember God's many promises that our troubles are not more than we can handle. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says they are common to man. But uh, really, uh, the verse itself says temptations. Temptations, um, that's what it's talking about. Uh, I'm not sure why he would apply it by he would say that temptations and troubles are the same thing. I guess that maybe uh uh when we fall into temptation we get ourselves into trouble. That could be that could be what he's talking about. Not sure there. a uh, little little uh wondering about that why he would uh go to the temptation verse there. But uh yeah I guess uh if you think about it, when you're tempted and you fall into that temptation you tend to get yourself into trouble. But uh other troubles will come I mean, not saying that every trouble that you get yourself into is uh, is because of uh, you. It could be because somebody else is uh, trying to cause you trouble. I mean, we have personal troubles that we have that we get in ourselves into trouble when we fall into temptations and, and it becomes a sin. <clears throat> and we don't flee from that temptation and we just fall right in or we walk right into it. I can't say fall because it's a process. So, But we walk right into that temptation and we don't... Uh, flee from it, and then we get ourselves into trouble. That's one way of getting yourself into trouble. And then there's other types of troubles where other people are troubling you. <clears throat> and it might not be yourself doing it, but other people trying to do it to you. So, and anyway, <clears throat> I guess that's what he's talking about there. All right, so anyways, let's continue on. It says, uh, Psalm thirty four nineteen tells us, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. With the utmost respect, I believe our text reveals that the Lord is our faithful go-to one in time of trouble. Thank God. Amen. So thank God for that. Praise the Lord. All right. So <clears throat> that was the topic of the go-to guy. Amen. And we are to go to Jesus for all of our uh, trials and tribulations and troubles and problems and cast all of our cares upon him. That's what the verse says. 
cast all your cares upon Jesus. Amen. And uh, when trouble comes, whether it be trouble that you caused yourself or trouble from other people, let us go to the Lord. And if you're trying going to uh, run into temptation, you need to flee from it and not get yourself into trouble that way. So when temptation comes, there is a way of escape. As 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, that it's common to man, those temptations. And uh, But if you flee from it and go to the Lord and help uh, before before you get yourself caught up in it, uh, this, that's a better way to go. Amen. So when that temptation comes, let us run to the Lord and not run to the temptation, but flee from it and run to the Lord and say, Lord, help, help, I need your help. Help me get out of this temptation, because there is a way of escape out of that temptation. It doesn't have to become sin. Amen? So, hope you'll uh, bring that into your remembrance every time you uh, read that verse. <clears throat> Alright, so now, let us dive into the verses for today. And we're in Romans uh, chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. If you have your Bible with you, please follow along. If you're somewhere where you can't get to your Bible, like you're driving or you're at work and you can't pull your Bible out at work, just please follow along. And we will be in chapter 11, verses 1 through uh, 18 today. So let us read chapter 11, verses 1 through 18. And it says thus, I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I am... For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. And this is uh, Paul speaking. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and digged down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith, saith the answer of God unto him? I have received, or reserved, my, uh, to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace? Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. And David saith, let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their uh, back alway. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to, uh, to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any mean, means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit uh, be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so also the uh, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partaketh of the root and fatness of the olive tree, Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the uh, but the root thee. Hmm. So that's there. He's talking to uh, 
the Jewish people there, and they too can be saved and trust Jesus if they would just uh, realize that he's their Messiah, and just like the Gentiles put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and his finished work, the Jews can do that also, and that's what he's trying to explain to them here, I believe, is that uh, he's trying to get them to understand that they too can have salvation and and trust Jesus if they would just realize that it's Jesus Christ that died for their sins and that he's their Messiah and that he's the one that can save and it's not uh, by anything that they can do. It's not by their law keeping. It's not by any type of works. Um, yeah, later on, works come uh, later on after you're saved. Uh, you want to try to serve the Lord the best you can, but again, that doesn't save your soul. Only Jesus Christ can save your soul. Amen. So... Um, that's what that's speaking about, and doesn't mean that that God gave up on the Jewish people and turned turned elsewhere because He's going to go back and uh, finish what He started with the with the nation of Israel after the church is caught up in the air to beat the Lord in the air. Amen. So that was chapter eleven, verses one through eighteen, and tomorrow or next time, uh, not sure. If I'll be back tomorrow, maybe I'll uh, do one later tonight or early in the morning because uh, heading out, going on a little uh, excursion down to Miami to to do some uh, ministry and go down to some kind of um, revival or some kind of um, tent meeting or whatever they're having down there, a group of us from church. So if you'll keep that in your prayers. Uh, so I probably won't be on uh, tomorrow, but I'll try to maybe do it later tonight or uh, get up early in the morning before I leave and try to do tomorrow's devotion early or maybe I'll do it Sunday with the Sunday's devotion so we will see what happens all right so hope you'll stay tuned for that and tomorrow's topic will be titled vision problems who vision problems so <laughs> do we have vision problems um, what are we looking at what are we seeing all right so Hope you'll stay tuned for that. And if you're not saved, please, I uh, hope you'll trust J Jesus Christ today as your Savior, for He is the only one that can save your soul. And if you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone, He will wash away all your sin. Amen. All right, well, this is Brother Scott signing off. Hope you all have a great and wonderful rest of your day. And Amen. Bye-bye for now.